Hello all, welcome to VC Electronics. This is a part two of interview preparation video, and today we are going to see some basic questions from the very basic C programming. Okay, so this C programming, C plus plus, and Java are very important if you are going for core company interviews also. So today we are going to uh, see some basic questions of C programming. I hope that if you are preparing for any of the uh, competitive examinations also, this video will be useful. Okay, so uh, let us see what is the first question. So these are very basic questions. Now the first question is, I have all the questions in my hand. Let us read out the questions. The first question is this, what are the key features of C programming language? So uh, we know that uh, the languages can be classified basically as three types, machine language, assembly language and high level programming language. Okay, so the machine language means the language which is understandable to the machine or the underlying hardware. The machine language will be in the form 1010, that is ones and zeros will be machine language. And uh, there is another type of language called assembly language in, we, in which we use some processor specific uh, keywords or instructions. We use uh, such type of language is called assembly language. This is machine language. Whereas if we code in a way uh, where the code is understandable to humans and later on they, they has to be converted to the machine language. So such type of human understandable coding is called high level coding or high level language. So C is a high level language. Okay, so we are going to uh, discuss about the features of C programming language. So it is a high level programming language. Second one, it is a uh, platform independent. That is, it can work on various platforms, Windows uh, or any other operating system, they can uh, work properly. So it is platform independent and also we can uh, we can reduce this uh, high level programming language to that is the code we can divide as various uh, modules. Okay, so that is another important feature. The last feature is that they are having high compilation speed. So these are the various important features and the most important feature is this they are platform independent and they are high level programming language the next question is this what is happening during compiling we know that compiling is a process in which we convert the high level language to a machine understandable uh, machine language right so what is happening during the compiling during compiling this high level language is converted into machine language and also there are some inbuilt functions used in the uh, coding and we have to uh, add the files or uh, we have to actually uh, tell the uh, system that what is this inbuilt function. So for that, we actually go into the library and we fetch the files from the library and attach with this program. Okay, so that process is called linking. So during compilation, what is happening? The high level source code is given to the compiler. And it is converted to object codes and then it is given to the linker where the library files are being added and after linking we will get machine codes or executable codes. Okay, so this is the this is the flow of compilation. So compilation means compilation and also linking is happening. Only then, uh, only after compilation and linking, we will get our actual executable codes. Okay, so this is the flow of compilation. The next question is, what is a header file? So you know that uh, if you see a very basic C program, for example, C program for printing, hi, okay, hash include, stdio.h void main this is the main function and inside that we use a printf and inside the printf we are going to print hi okay so this is so this is the uh, simple program used for uh, printing of hi okay so here if you see this is there is a statement or there's a line called hash include stdio.h now this stdio.h is called a header file 
Now, what is the function of header files? Header files are actually files which uh, include all the library functions or inbuilt functions we can use in the uh, in the path of our coding. For example, here there is a printf. So we have not defined. So this printf bracket means it is a function. So we have not defined what is the actual working of this printf. But inside this stdio.h file, we have defined this printf function. So this uh, stdio.h uh, is actually called a header file header file and this header file includes all the inbuilt functions like this for example printf scanf all these functions are being included in this header file so that are called header file next question is this what is the difference in using angular brackets and double quotes for header files so we can use uh, angular brackets or double quotes for uh, specifying this header file uh, or hash include statement Okay, so what is the difference in using this angular brackets and also the double quotes? So when the double quotes are being used, first we will search for this header file in the directory in which you are uh, programming. Then if it is not found in the directory, only then it will go to the built-in include path. Okay, but when the angular brackets are used, it will directly go and search for the header file in the, in the include path path which we have described okay so that is the difference we can actually use the angular brackets and header uh, double quotes for including the header files we normally include only angular brackets okay so when the angular bracket is used directly they will go to the uh, built-in path but if double quotes is used first it will search in the directory only then it will go to the uh, the path okay the next question is this what are the basic data types used in C programming? So, uh, the C programming consists of various data types. Int for uh, specifying integers. Float for describing the decimal numbers or floating point numbers. Double. That is again for describing decimal numbers with double precision. Then, char for specifying characters. Void. So, these are the these are the fundamental or the basic data types used in C programming. Okay. Next question. What is the difference between static and dynamic memory allocation? So this is a, uh, another important question or the common question seen in interviews or heard in interviews. Okay. So there are two types of memory allocation. We are only seeing all the basic questions. We are not going deeper into the uh, C programming. We are just uh, going through the basic areas of the C coding interview questions. Okay. So the memory allocation can be classified as two. It can be static or it can be dynamic. Okay. Uh, static memory allocation means during compilation of the program, we allocate memory that is called a static memory allocation. For example, for memory allocation of arrays and all, we use static memory allocation. That is during the uh, compiling of this code itself, the memory is getting allocated. Now, what is dynamic memory allocation means during the run time. So, this happens during the compile time. Okay, so you should answer like this. Compile time memory allocation is called static memory allocation and run time allocation is called dynamic allocation. Okay, example you can see as linked list. We have not, we are not discussing about linked list in this video. Anyway, the example you can say as linked list because in linked list, the memory is actually getting created and uh, getting deleted dynamically during the runtime. The new link list are or new uh, new blocks are being added to the link list and uh, getting deleted. So these all things happen during the runtime itself. So in linked list, the memory allocation is dynamic. And uh, for dynamic memory allocation, we use certain functions called m alloc, c alloc, etc. So these are some examples of the dynamic memory allocation. Question is this, what is the difference between plus plus a and a plus plus? So this is both are increment operations, right? Plus plus, if you see, that is called increment operation. Now, uh, what is the difference between plus plus a and a plus plus? Plus plus a means it is called prefix incrementation and a plus plus means postfix uh, incrementation or increment operation. Now, what is the difference between plus plus a and a plus plus? So, here first incrementation is happening. Okay, so first the variable or the value of a is getting incremented and then it is getting stored to the same variable. Okay, but in case of a++, the incrementation is happening only after the execution of this line. 
so a then plus plus so only after this line is getting executed a is getting incremented but here incrementation is happening and then it is getting stored so it is called prefix incrementation a plus plus is called postfix incrementation difference between while 1 and while 0 okay so while 1 we know that it is an infinite loop and it is always true so this while statement is always true and it creates an infinite loop now while 0 means it is always false and it will never get executed so these are actually opposite terms so while 1 is always true, this is always false. This creates an infinite loop, but while 0 will never get executed. So that is the difference between while 1 and while 0. The next question is this. What is the difference between array and pointers? Array is actually a collection of similar data types. For example, in A is an array of integer values. What is the difference between this array and a pointer? A pointer is actually a variable which stores the address to the another variable. Okay, for example, int star pointer. So, this is actually, this pointer star indicates it is a pointer. So, this pointer is storing the address of another variable. So, that is the difference between an array and a pointer. Array means it stores a collection of similar data types. It can be anything. It can be a uh, character array or any data type can be used. So, uh, it stores a collection of or it is a collection of similar data types. We cannot store various data types in a, this type of array. Then pointer means it stores the address to the another variable. Next question is this, what is a static function? So we normally declare functions as global functions. If we declare a function as static, for example, static function uh, or static uh, add. Okay, so this function is a static function. Okay. So here, if we declare a function as static means this function has only restricted access. That means we can only access that function within that source file. We cannot access the function uh, outside from the source file. So that is the uh, that is the aim of declaring a function as static means we want to restrict the access of that function. Otherwise, the function is declared as no, uh, global. Okay, so. If function is declared as static means we are uh, having only a restricted access. Okay, so these are the questions which I have included in this video. We will be doing the part 2 uh, and various parts of the interview preparations. We will be doing uh, uh, videos for C programming, C++ and also for electronic interview questions. On every Sunday, we are doing this interview preparation. So, I hope that these videos will be useful for your preparation of uh, competitive examinations and interviews also. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up and also share these videos with all your friends who is interested in watching topics of electronics and also tell them to subscribe to the channel. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.